the Coopersville Jane Doe, also known as Matilda, identified as Shelley Ray Kephart. Shelley Kephart also used the last name of Christian. I've never seen this much conflicting information in a case, and so I'm just going to do the best that I can. She was 29 when she went missing. It was in 1994 that her skeletal remains were found by a pair of rabbit hunters in a wooded area outside Wright Township, Michigan, on November 6th, near the city of Coopersville. She was given the nickname Matilda and determined to be of Hispanic descent, which it turns out is incorrect. They believe she was placed there between May and September of 1994. I can't even tell you the concrete cause of death. When I say this case is a mess, I'm just not kidding. One concrete fact, however, is that someone was targeting personal entertainment workers, and more than a dozen women were found. Larry Dwayne Hall is believed to be the perpetrator of most or all of these women, and they put Shelley in this category before she was ever named. Sadly, there are still many unnamed victims. His victim number could be as high as 15, but that includes Shelley. The problem with this assumption, however, is that Shelley was living a pretty normal life when she disappeared. There's not one shred of evidence she was involved in that trade, and that's who Hall targeted. For that reason, authorities now question this assumption, so there are no concrete clues as to who took her life. It also brings into question the number of people they've added to the list. Honestly, this case is just a huge puzzle. I was torn between presenting it and not being sure and wanting to pay tribute to Shelley's life. I know I make mistakes now and then, but I really try hard to get it right. And if anyone knows anything about what was going on in her life at that time, please come forward. The number's on your screen. Shelley Ray Kephart went unidentified for 27 years. The Gwinnett County John Doe, 2003, identified as Gordon Rexroad. This case is a little bit of a mystery. We know that Gordon was born in 1932, and he was likely around 70 when it went missing. There's one photo of him, and it appears to be a cheery elderly man with a dog. How he became homeless wasn't disclosed, but he distanced himself from his family, and he began living a transient lifestyle. He disappeared from the public record in 2002, the year prior to being found. His family never stopped loving him and looking for him. They became alarmed as time moved on and they hadn't heard from him. They would later admit that they eventually came to believe something had happened to him. The reality was that Gordon was found in 2003 in Lawrenceville, Georgia, when workers picked up a manhole cover to clean out a drain after a storm, but instead found Gordon. His cause of death wasn't known, but it was believed it could have been an overdose, as Gordon had a crack pipe on him. But that doesn't explain why he went inside that manhole. He had no identification, and they estimated him to be 45 to 55, which is a lot short of Gordon's real age. It's why the recreations look so much younger than Gordon. I do have to give props to the Gwinnett County for whoever it was who does these recreations. In this case, because of the circumstances, it's unlikely that even with the correct age, it could have been solved. It doesn't appear that Gordon was officially reported missing, and Gwinnett County worked the case hard in order to identify him. Med and Gordon's situation are sadly harder to solve. It's hard to go missing when you're always missing. I worked for years in mental health, and I have such a soft place for people like Gordon. I realize there are often drugs involved, but there's also so many reasons this happens. About 50% of homeless individuals have a severe mental illness, and the number's higher for women, perhaps as high as 75%. I had a client once who literally couldn't live inside of a home. She heard voices that she felt were coming from the walls, and the only way she was able to cope is if she could live outside. Delusions are as real to them as the table that's in front of me now, and it's hard to live that way. Men like Gordon are often known to self-medicate at a higher risk of death and as a society, we keep removing mental health services. I do hope that people understand there are endless reasons outside of a person's control that work against them. It's not so much a choice to become homeless as well as accumulation of circumstances. So please be kind when you see people who are struggling without a home. You don't know what got them there. It would not be until May of 2021 that this case began to warm up. 
as Gwinnett County reached out to the DNA Doe Project, finally finding an answer for his family in February of 2022. If you want to help out with the DNA Doe Project, you can go to their site and help choose which cases you want to fund. Gordon D. Rexroad went unidentified for 18 years. Little Miss Nobody, identified as Sharon Lee Gallegos. Susan was just four when she went missing, from Alamogordo, New Mexico, on July 21, 1960. She was at her grandmother's home, playing in the backyard alone, something that would normally be safe, but sadly, in this case, it wasn't. And it's explained in what's been written about this case that she had trouble with a couple who were seen observing the young girl more than once and they tried at least twice to lure her into a green-colored vehicle. 61 years ago. We were just discussing her case in the comments below Cliff Doe's identification, and it created a discussion on her name. The majority of people replying took issue with why she was named Little Miss Nobody. It feels disrespectful. Not all the names are disrespectful, but this one really stings. But then again, there's nothing good about even needing a fake name. The police have gone back to what happened in the days following her abduction. Though it's a little infuriating because this could have been done years ago, when answers would be easier to find. They always knew somebody took her. Another misstep is that they ruled out Sharon being the doe in question. This has happened before in other cases, and it all depends on who's doing the identifications, their abilities, and maybe a little bit of luck. There are two obvious reasons someone would steal a child of that age. It's unusual for a woman to be involved in something like this. So there was some suggestion that the goal had been to steal a child to keep and raise as their own. As awful as that is, it feels better than any other possible reason. And the main one is far more nefarious and darker to consider. Considering her body was found only 10 days after she went missing, it's probably the latter. She was discovered by a school teacher out for a hike. Following her discovery, the local community rushed forward to raise money to buy a casket and give the girl a proper burial. The inscription read, Little Miss Nobody, and Blessed are the pure in heart. They knew little at the time. She'd been wearing shoes made from adult flip-flops, cut and crafted into something her size. Her nails were painted. A pocket knife was found with her remains and there was some indication that someone tried to burn the evidence. She had been transported from her home in New Mexico to an area in Arizona known as Sand Creek. This area is mountainous and located near the town of Congress, Arizona. This is nearly 700 miles away from where she went missing. To put it into perspective, she should have had a life and would be just 65 now. And the two people who did this probably aren't even alive anymore to pay, if that's even an option. The abductors appeared to have been in their 30s at the time. That would make them in their 90s now. It's unlikely anyone will pay for what was done to this young girl. This case was covered by the channel in August of 2021, and I'll provide the link in the description below. Sharon's nephew, Ray Chavez, spoke at a press conference, saying, We as the family would like to thank you to thank you for what you've done for us, to thank you for keeping my aunt safe, and for never forgetting her. It's still sinking in. Sharon went unidentified for 61 years. Had she lived, she would be 65 today. That's it for today. Thank you everybody for watching and listening. Take care of yourselves and each other.